and uh, I like DX Labs software. I've been using it for a number of years, so I needed to get the DM780 DXL bridge to bridge it to Ham Radio Deluxe. I like features of both, so now I can use both logging software simultaneously. Um, the interface is um, automatically open with DX Lab Launcher, so you can open all the different programs all at once by using this, and you can modify uh, which ones you want to use, and also you can uh, uh, you can go to update any uh, any of the software. So um, it takes a while to load. In the meantime, um, I uh, found that uh, I could narrate and edit using uh, Premiere Elements 9, which I'm currently using. So this is the first time I've done this. It seems to be working okay. Um, for the, the capturing software that I'm use, using is uh, not freeware. It's called Easy Video Capture, and I can zoom in on the different windows uh, and get some clarity, much more clarity than I did with the webcam. Um, so anyway, the programs are opening up. And uh, once they do open, we can go into each window and analyze what's going on there. Uh, this is all connected to the uh, ICOM 756 Pro 3, so that um, all of the uh, program uh, features can be linked to the rig. Um, I use the commander that's in DX Labs to connect, but you can also use Hammer Radio Deluxe's connection. Um, there's an option to do it either way, but I prefer to, do, to use uh, the simpler way, and that is using, uh, anyway, this is the commander here, using um, that, the commander rather than the HRD. Um, I'm tuning, manually tuning, you can see that the frequency is changing. And you can also store frequencies, and I have some frequencies stored that are are uh, speakins. And you can control the you know split and dual receive and whatever uh, the modes f with the uh, commander. And it seems to work pretty uh, regularly. It's uh, I don't have any trouble with it. Uh, this is the um, uh, spotting software. Uh, there are currently five different sources that are that I'm receiving spots from, and there's skimmers throughout the planet that are scanning the low end of the CW bands. And whenever someone calls CQ, it automatically will be put up on the spot. So you don't really have to tune your receiver. Uh, you can see anyone that's calling CQ and get onto their frequency pretty much in real time. It also shows the signal-to-noise ratio between the, uh, the signal uh, so origin and the skimmer. And the, who the skimmer is, and the, the calls, of course, and the frequencies. The ones that are in red are stations or locations that I haven't worked. And I double-clicked on W3DP. It was on 7031.9, calling CQ. And uh, then there's a little window that pops up. It's a DX, DX capture. And you can um, spot this if you wanted to manually spot that you're hearing him. Um, or you could begin the log. Um, and when you go to the log logging software, the DX Keeper, you'll see that uh, that station's call is automatically put into the base. And uh, you see that I didn't work anyone with that call so it's the first time and if I delete that you can I go back to my full log uh, it also will show you the last QSO that I had it, it has the address and the grid scare locator as well as the name and any other information about that station it's um, picked up by ham radio deluxe via qrz.com so you don't have to type QTH or zip codes or anything like that it's all done automatically if you wanted to send them a QSL you could and this is a DX keeper in real time it shows you uh, what station 
routes you've worked, uh, I'm sorry, what countries you've worked and what frequencies. And um, they're all in red because somehow I can't get, I'm using uh, Ham Radio Deluxe interface with uh, EQSL, and for some odd reason EQSL doesn't show up on the uh, uh, on the on the uh, DX DX Keeper. Uh, th this is a parameters for the propagation, so you can see uh, that uh, this is a propagation between myself and and uh, Arizona at that particular moment, which was around 7:30 UTC. Um, and uh, it'll predict either a short path or a long path, depending on which way you're going. Um, this is the HRD logger, so you can see that uh, the station is in there. This is, uh, I think this might be the last QSO that I've had. And uh, it also has a window there for the digital modes if you want to, uh, to use BSK31 or any of the multitudes of other digital modes that are out there. Um, but I have it set up for CW right now, so there's no use for the, the waterfall, which is normally below. Um, and you can bounce around different windows. If, if I were using a digital mode, you could go to the uh, super browser, which would show all the different stations that are transmitting and what they're saying simultaneously and then you could double click on that and go to the frequency. This is one of my sources. You can see that how fast they're coming in from the skimmers as well as uh, people that have directly inputted it. I uh, filter my spots to just the northeast US because uh, there's no point in listening to trying to work a station that's been spotted from Eastern Europe on a skimmer over there. So um, I, I limit it down to just the eastern U.S. But you can see they're coming in from all over the world quite rapidly. And we're going back to the, uh, to the DX spotting window, and you can see the different sources there that I've, uh, I'm connected to. And also you can see that the, uh, what the solar indices are, the, the solar flux. And... Uh, the ones that are in red are ones that I haven't worked yet, uh, countries that I haven't worked, or stations. Um, and what else it has? Uh, various other uh, little bells and whistles that you can do uh, to uh, narrow down your search. And you can actually, it'll, it'll put them into a buffer so that if you wanted to see, uh, say, a station that's been on the air any time that you've had the spot detector running, you could click on it and find whether whether they've been on the air, or at least whether they've called CQ or someone else has spotted them. Uh, this is a log and uh, an HRD. It has options to put different windows in, so I have it set up to show the current uh, cycle, where we are in the current solar cycle, and uh, the gray line as well as the time. And if uh, you click on a station that you've worked recently, you can open Google Earth, and Google Earth will show you that location. And it also stores all the different stations that you've worked, so that you can see, um, you know, what frequencies and what stations you've you've contacted. Um, I think I don't really know the number of uh, stations that it will log. But um, you can see some of the calls of stations that I've worked recently that uh, I've Googled with Google Earth. And um, let's see, I don't know whether we're getting any narration here. It seems to be working okay, but we'll see when it's over whether <laughs> uh, the uh, microphone is working properly. Um, still playing around with this Premier Elements 9. So I don't know whether I've got all the the uh, options working correctly to get the narration in its proper sync to the uh, actual video. Um, so I'm zooming in on this station's QTH. I think he's in Arizona. And you can see 
the, it's taking a while to load because I have uh, the easy video capture running in the background to capture the uh, the window. So um, I think eventually we do see his his uh, QTH there. So uh, there there he is. Um, looks like a nice uh, swimming pool there. Uh, this is the um, HRD log on the internet and you log into it you can see your log that is automatically updated from HRD and uh, it also has other bells and whistles um, in the sidebar for seeing what other stations you've worked or uh, what bands are most popular at work what times of the day and uh, various other you know data uh, that's coming in and being put onto graphs so you, it's pretty cool. Um, I just connected to this recently, so I had trouble getting it to uh, read my VE3 log. 